Hey there folks, welcome to Upgrade Junkie. My name is Jake and today we're going to be taking a look at my MSI GS65 laptop and doing a thermal metal mod on it as well. So for the teardown, we are going to start by pulling all the screws out of the back. Now you should know that this laptop is a fingerprint magnet, no doubt about it. So I'm having to clean it off beforehand. Now the reason I'm doing this thermal metal mod is because when I go into ID64 or I do any other kind of stress test or gaming, my CPU will drop up, jump up to 90 degrees C. I wanna deal with that, so I'm gonna end up pulling this apart. Now the first thing I'm gonna end up doing is pulling the screws out of the back of it. Now there is about 10 to 12 screws back here and you make sure that you, you wanna make sure that you get them all. Uh, the reason being is that aluminum back is very thin and you don't want to bend it and end up with a crease in the back of your laptop that you just bought. Now this laptop does come in at around $2,000 from Best Buy. It comes with a 512 gigabit hard drive, a GTX 1070 Max-Q. It also has an i7-8750H and 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, the main thing that drew me to this laptop was the screen. It's a 144 hertz IPS screen with almost zero bezels. So it kind of pulled me to it. I had an ROG with the 1060 in it before this, but it just got a little too big for me. Now I'm finishing up pulling out the screws here. I'm using a suction cup from my iFixit kit to pull the back off. I um, happen to be a little bit careful here because the uh, latches on the hinge side were getting caught. So I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna end up working those out very gently. Once again, this back is extremely thin, so you're going to wanna to be gentle with it. Now we get into the laptop and we see the major issue I have with this laptop. The motherboard is flipped. So my RAM, my hard drives, the coolers and everything are on the opposite side. So I'm gonna start by pulling these three screws out of the battery uh, to free that up. So I have the two on the side and one in the middle. Also, while it, I have a little down moment right here, I want to apologize for the ghostiness of my hands in the video. Uh, I kind of messed up with my lighting and had to do some video tricks to make it not flicker. But right here, we do have the audio cable in the black and red. I end up pulling this little piece of tape off right here. Make sure you get that one. And the audio cable is actually resting in some channels in the battery pack. So you want to be very careful as you're pulling it out and make sure that you don't rip the audio cable out with you. Okay, this just simply lifts up from the back and pulls out. There's the channels I was talking about. Just lightly pull it out of there. Be very careful not to pull from the sides. And then you have the battery cable still connected. Now this took a little fumbling for me to get out, but as long as you just work it back and forth, you should be able to get it out, no problem. It did take me about a minute, so you get a nice jump cut right there. I ended up using no real tools on it, just had to use my hands. And then toss that off to the side. Now coming up, I should be disconnecting the actual indicator lights here on the right hand side. So with that, you have little flaps that you flip up on the actual connectors and then you pull the small ribbon cables out. Do be careful with these ribbon cables. They're like a quarter the size of a credit card and very easy to break. So I use my little prying tool, the black one right there, and I flip the little latch up and then I pull the cable out. Sorry about my hair. Now I'm gonna move on. This is the, I believe this is for the trackpad right here. And also for the trackpad as well. So once again, just, you see it flip up right there. Make sure you're doing that and getting them out safely. Now this larger one right here, I'm using the actual tool to flip it up because it's a little bit easier. You gotta make sure when you're flipping these up that you're going the right way. They actually kind of alternate as you go down. So watch the video and see which way I'm flipping them up to go. And then the next thing I'm unplugging is the speaker cord right here. Uh, a little bit easier to get the tool in there to actually pull this part out. Just work it out, be careful. With this entire tear down, you wanna take your time. Getting in a rush is going to end up damaging something and you do not want to break this new laptop. Okay, I end up working it out right there. The next part I'm going to go for, I believe, is the Wi-Fi card. 
with the Wi-Fi card, you're actually going to have to unscrew it from the case. So I'm going to go under it and work up this tape right here, unscrew it, and then you have two little leads on it. Now these leads actually just kind of snap on. They're almost just like uh, snaps on clothing. So they pop off very easily. They are a little bit annoying to get back on because they're so small, but you can get them back on. So I'm going to fold this up right here and unscrew it because it's actually screwed down to the laptop case itself. I'm going to pop the little leads off. Make sure you uh, keep a good eye on where they go back on. I believe that the one with the little red wrap on it goes on the right hand side of the video. So when you're looking at it, it'll probably be on your left if you're looking from the angle I am. So unscrew this and pull it out. It kind of pulls out like an M.2. And then just be gentle as you pull it out. It should come out very easily. And that's actually pretty easy to put back in, but the snaps are a little bit annoying to get on. Now these are taped and channeled up through underneath by the fans. So you're going to want to just kind of push them up and out of the way for right now. When you pull the motherboard out, you're going to have to actually guide those out. You'll see when it comes up. Now right here is the actual connector for the monitor, for the screen, I'm sorry, for the screen. This was a little bit harder to get up, so make sure you're using your tools and being very gentle with it. Uh, after that, it is taped down, so you're going to have to use a little bit of force when you pull it up, but make sure you're using even force and controlled. You don't want it to pop up and then you just rip it right off. So, got it out right there. Sorry about the bad hand placement. You just once again flip up the little piece and then you pull it out. Now, I'm working very slow getting the adhesive up. Once again, it's going to take a little bit of force, but make sure it's controlled. You do not want it to come loose and just rip. And there we go. I seem to have got it up. And then you're just going to want to pull it up off the entire assembly. And then fold it up on the back. Now the next thing I should go for, I believe, is the power button there at the bottom of your screen. Nope, I'm sorry. I went for the screws first in this one. You're going to have two screws that are actually holding the motherboard in place. So both of them are located right under the fan. Now what I'm doing with all my screws, I have a little magnetic parts tray. I'm placing them down in a clockwise rotation as I pull them out. So when I go back with it, it's a lot easier. Okay, the screws are now out, and the last thing I'm going to go for is that power button. So it comes out just like everything else, flip up the little piece and pull it out. This one, when you go back with it, you're going to want to make sure it's seated. I actually had to go back and make sure it's seated because it didn't start up afterwards. Now when you pull this out, you're going to want to go from your left side, the right in the video, Pop it out of that side and then slide it out so that you don't hurt any of the connectors on the other side. This does take a little bit of jimmying to get loose, but once again, just be patient with this entire job. And then once it comes out, you're going to want to guide the wires out that go to the Wi-Fi card and it should pop out pretty easy. After that, I just end up putting this at a safe place to my side. And there we go you have your motherboard out. Now, if you just wanted to stop and change out the M.2, it's there on the right-hand side of the video is the second one. Then you have your main 512 gigabyte one right there at the top. This laptop actually comes with two eight gigabyte sticks of RAM, so you do have dual channel RAM, uh, and this is the Best Buy model. Now I'm gonna end up removing about five screws from the cooler. They're all located in the center, uh, not on the outside, so you should be good.
Okay, after you get all the screws out, you do just have to work off the fans themselves. They're not too hard to get off, but you do have to apply a little pressure so it is a little bit unnerving. Once again, just work it off slow. You'll feel it pop off as the adhesive gives way. And then you actually have three fan connectors there. I actually flipped it over and then I pushed down and it ends up giving away eventually. Once again, be very, very gentle as you do this, but use a little bit of force. You don't want to damage everything and you want to make sure you have all those screws out of there. Now the fan connectors for me are a little bit hard. They're small and I have slightly big hands, so I tried to use a few tools as I did it. So I try to use the little prying tools to actually work those fan connectors out. I think I end up going just with my hands to get it out. And speed up the video so y'all don't have to watch as I fumble around so badly. But once again, you have the two fan connectors on the very outsides, and then the one in the middle there has a little bit of tape on it that you got to pull off, and then you're able to pop it out. Now, I think when I went back together, I didn't put the tape on, so hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me later on. Now, I don't have the reassemble video after this, but just watch this video and go in reverse. It's actually pretty easy to get together. Now I have it out, you have your CPU and GPU right there. What I'm going to use is a microfiber cloth and some alcohol. And I'm going to end up cleaning all that off until it's a mirror finish, making sure that I get everything off on the outsides as well. Zoom in a little bit and hopefully don't get my head in shot anymore. Okay, once again, make sure you're getting everything off of here. Take your time, get it right the first time. You want to have that totally clean so when you put the liquid metal on, it actually has a good conductiveness. Sorry, there's a better way to say that. Make sure that the heat transfer is good. So once you shine them up to a mirror finish, get everything clean around it, you're going to end up going in. And I start right here with some clear nail polish. Check into it, make sure that you get a non-conductive one, but I end up putting that on all the little contacts and everything around it, the capacitors, I believe is what those are, just to give a barrier in case the liquid metal does shift, that it doesn't get on them and short anything out. So everything that looks like metal, I go toss a little bit on. Uh, if you're really worried, you can put it on the actual parts around the green PCB right there and not just the die, but I didn't have a problem. Now with the liquid metal, you're gonna wanna go slow and spread it around until it is a mirror finish. You don't want it too thin, but you don't want it pooling up on it as well. Uh, a lot of times liquid metal does not like to apply, so you have to work with it a lot. Now after I'm done applying the liquid metal to the actual dyes, I put it on the cooling side as well. I put it on the heat sinks on the actual blowers on the other side. So I actually didn't, my camera ended up dying and I didn't get video of the reassemble, but it did go together pretty well. Just once again, use this video as a guide and go in the opposite direction. Now, one of the big things I did when I put the cooler back on, I placed it on and screwed it in first before I plugged the fan headers in. Okay, folks, as to wrap it up here, I'll give you some of the results. Uh, initially, when I ran Ida 64 or 84, I'm forgetting now. Uh, when I ran that, I was hitting 90 degrees C right off the start, and I was actually thermal throttling up to about 30% throttle. After this mod, I was able to drop it down in the 60s. Under full GPU and CPU load, it got up to the 80s with no thermal throttling at all. So I'm extremely excited about those results. Now, if I turn the cooler boost down on the laptop, I was able to get it down to 50 degrees. But my whole reason for doing this mod was to make it quieter. I didn't want to play games. I didn't want to edit on this rig while it was just screaming fan noise. But as I finish up here, I'm throwing a little bit more nail polish on just to protect if anything comes off. But have a good day, y'all. See you in the next video.